afternoon all so here we go kicking dust part seven um it just shows you how much i love this game though i've actually done seven parts of this because it is it is pretty decent um and i think hopefully you've enjoyed some of the footage and uh if you have uh let me know if you want me to do anything in particular i've done a few guides well i've done one guide and i've done a couple more that i'll upload over time but um i think that you know the feedback was that actually helped so i'm happy to help um and i think it's a confusing game i mean you know if you if you come into this expecting everything to mirror Eve, you, you know, you're going to be disappointed because um, just some of the basics, like the way you accumulate skill points over time rather than, a, than select a skill that you train and so on. So it, it can be a little bit different. Um, and also, I just think the amount of people still using the standard fits kind of shows me that, um, you know, a lot of people are still not 100% knowing what you can do. Also, just the fact that no one seems to spawn vehicles in. Um, I did a post on one of the videos previous to this, which was saying, look, you should, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but you should be able to spawn in this wonderful vehicle I'm in here. Um, this is the standard starter fit car. Um, it's got a rocket launcher on the back and basically it's, I guess it's the dust version of the Warthog. Um, and it's a pretty good thing because first of all, it's a great big lump of metal so you can hit people and kill them with it. And it's uh, it's got a pretty good gun on the back. So um, <clears throat> I think whenever you're doing any of these uh, skirmish style games, it's probably best that you actually do look to always try and spawn a, um, a vehicle in because the benefit of what it gives you is uh, that you can move around quickly. It's also a good weapon as well. So, um, you know, don't forget that you always have this. It doesn't cost you anything to spawn in. Um, and vehicles, I would say, are an absolutely key part of this game. So, uh, you can just see how quickly I'm moving around, hacking everything, getting war points for doing this. Um, and it's just easy really because you've got cars so <laughs> you couldn't ask for it being any easier to be honest um, I think also I'm using an assault rifle again um, I think it's just because I haven't really got the skill points to set up the fits that I want to set up um, I set up a shotgun uh, character but not a big fan of using that just at the moment this map is not the friendliest one to use for shotguns you need a bit of range as you can see there if I'd have come across that guy with a shotgun well I'd be in trouble so you know you need to have the uh, the range for this map of an assault rifle but there are some maps where <clears throat> having a shotgun will just give you such an advantage um, and I think really you know you need you need to have the fits ready to go um, so when you know you're in a particular map you know which one to spawn in and I think also that goes the same with the heavy as well I, I <laughs> look at this oh I missed him can you believe it that sucks so bad and I can't even see him oh got him though <laughs> so you know this is the thing with cars this is why they're so cool I really would think you know just, just have a bit of fun you can basically do that <laughs> oh it's brutal brutal I say um, and, <laughs> and then you miss utterly like that which is brilliant uh, anyway, and then you know this is where I die so, <laughs> so I think you know it really does make um, the game a bit more uh, enjoyable I'm not sure why they started focusing on the car there did they not see me leap from it <clears throat> anyway, just the thing here about the uh, secondary weapon, you see that I ran out of primary ammo on my primary, so I was able to switch to the SMG very quickly. So that's a good tactic if you're looking to, uh, you know, play the game seriously. Uh, is it's probably not a bad thing to have a good secondary weapon. The pistol is crap. Don't don't use it. I mean, some people like it. I don't. Um, the SMG that I got though is a rare. Well, it's not rare, it's part of the mercenary pack, so unless you bought that, you're not going to get it. But just consider maybe buying an SMG for your, for your lower slot, um, just because I think it's better than the pistol. But however, I still died, the guy with the rifle shot me in the head, um, which is just part of the process of it. <clears throat> so again, I think the kind of the th key things really around this is, you know, try and get a relatively good f uh, selection of suits. Um, and I spoke yesterday and again, you know, the comments have been really cool because, you know, it's really great to sort of hear what maybe you're, you're interested in because I think one of the key things that I would just want to elaborate on is you, in this game, it's not like EVE where you basically fit a ship and then you save that fitting so that when you buy all the modules again, you can instantly refit it. It's similar, but this game works upon the premise that you tell the system what your ideal fit is, and then there is just a simple restock function. So, um, yeah, the market is set currently so that every module is available at all times at the same price. Um, that may change, but I think right now, um, it enables you to basically restock, um, and you can build a surplus of suits. And the same goes for vehicles as well. 
Um, so I would just stress that's something to you know, perhaps consider is set up the ideal fit, you know, make sure you've got all the modules fitted, at least, you know, at least one unit of it. And then all you need to do from that point forward is just then refit as you go. Uh, oh God, going against the heavy is really bad. <laughs> Look at that guy, he just mowed me down. Now he's got a named gun, that's interesting. He's actually got um, one of the kind of level two, three or four um, heavy machine guns. Um, as you can see, he's pretty much mowing people down. And that's the difference. This is why I would say militia gear will get you onto the scoreboard, but it won't get you at the top. So <clears throat> always consider that, you know, you should be looking to have certain numbers of fits. Now, also with the fits, um, and again, don't want to go too far, but with the fits, you also can do something quite clever where you can have primary fits and secondary fits. So you could have 50 suits of standard cheap gear. Um, and what they may be is every suit costs, I don't know, 5,000 isk or something stupid, small like that. But then when you're on a roll or when you're in a map where you feel that you can dominate, you can do like that guy did where he's probably spawned in, you know, probably a, a two or 300k isk per suit fit. And he knows he's not going to die too much because, you know, he probably sees there's not the players on the opposite side who can really kind of take him down that often. So he, he's going to go, you know, balls out to basically do that. And that, that's actually quite a clever tactic that I certainly did as well, is you have almost like, you know, two heavy suits and one is, um, you know, a standard suit, cheap suit that you don't mind uh, losing. And the secondary is going to be your primary. And the same with any other fit. So sniper rifles, if you have a sniper fit, you can buy some really rare sniper rifles, top top of the range ones, but then have a secondary sniper fit, which is just run of the mill stuff, so you know that you don't mind losing. And I, I guess you could call that isk management, dust isk management, if you like, because um, the worst thing you can do is just buy 20 really decent, expensive suits and guns, and then just use them all the time, because you actually would just end up, you know, basically using them for no reason. Same goes for vehicles as well. Um, the vehicles later on, I mean, this is a this is a a cheapy vehicle but um in fact it's free in fact but the the reality behind this one oh just couldn't win that guy ever damn it and um the thing with the vehicles is as well as you'll have you know good fits bad fits and so on so um oh man i thought that was him uh, you, you know you can actually do basically a good and bad vehicle fit as well so you know have a have a play with it i would think it's you know as dress is a really um you know good uh strategy to have you could end up with, say, a dozen, maybe two dozen different fittings, uh, different uh, suit fittings, but the more you prepare, and it's like PvP and Eve, the more you prepare for the situation, the better you're stuck. So, you know, let's say right now there's nobody around, what I should do is uh, switch to a sniper suit, so I drive to the supply depot, refit to sniper, shoot some people, refit to heavy, get back in the car. And I think if you play it <clears throat> like that, you're going to pretty much own because that's how I think it's meant to be played. You know, you, you're constantly changing the fitting you have um, to suit the situation you need. Uh, we're dominating this map. Look at that, A, B, C, and D under our control. That's, uh, that's pretty good. Um, I think this is, might be a done deal already, but as you can see, I'm actually looking for somebody to even shoot and kill, but um, <clears throat> I think this is part of us. See, they, they're cloning in us. Oh. Boosh. Good morning. Oh man, no! <laughs> oh, bollocks, 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 bollocks. Oh well. And I think that's the beauty of this game is that you know, no matter how good you are or bad you are, you know, you, you never know what's going to happen. And that guy got me with a pistol. I mean, earlier before in the footage, you saw a guy shooting with a sniper rifle, point blank. And that's that takes some doing. Seriously, it's not as easy as it sounds. <laughs> um, so you can see, uh, just spawning here. I think again, we we're kind of dominating this map. What you find sometimes is that if you're being hemmed in, people start to try and... Oh, what's this fella doing? Not much. Uh, you, you start to find that when people are hemmed in, um, as in they're, they're completely pushed back to their base, um, they start to drop. So all of a sudden the, the level's just, you know, you get like 16 players versus two. <laughs> and unfortunately it's a bit common that, so I hope they're going to start punishing people who leave matches. But... Well, I don't know, probably not, actually. It's probably a, a stupid thing to do. But it, 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 there needs something there to kind of make it just a little bit easier because in some of the matches before the NDA dropped, or rather the Open Beta happened, um, you know, not saying too much, but basically people would just leave uh, and you'd be left with an empty match and the match would then stop. And, it, it, you know, the match was almost won or lost in the first ten, you know, first uh, two to three minutes, which, you know, that sucks. You don't want that. Um... And I think when they, the contract side of it comes more applicable, I guess, you know, it will actually be 
you won't be able to quit. You know, you'll have to stay in because otherwise you lose your contract. So I guess there'll be an ISK value behind that contract that you know the winner gets and the loser loses. So, um, but I don't know. Who knows? I mean, we will see. So he's here again, just calling in my trusty vehicle. Um, always do it. I mean, I think. It's fascinating seeing people forget that you always have this free vehicle. And again, tell me in the comments if I'm wrong, but it, it does seem that every player has a free vehicle at any time when they want it. Um, the, the wonderful impact. And uh, just the benefit of having it is um, you can get around quickly. And plus, I think, you know, you're difficult to kill in this. I mean, you know, very difficult to snipe. And I mean very difficult. Um, but it, so if you're sniped in one of these, then, you know, crikey, you've done something wrong. But... <laughs> Um, as you can see, look at the benefit of it. You know, you've now got a rocket launcher on the field. Now we're charging against a, a missile installation here because there's a guy in that who's been basically killing our people. So uh, we're going to try and stop him. Now notice it's in the enemy um, spawn zone. So we can't go in here for longer than a few seconds. I'm having to run in here. And I run in, shoot him, and then get out. <laughs> and it's funny how many players think you actually can't even go in these zones. But you can, as long as you get out in time. And you see there, ooh, close. And this is the beauty of the game, you know, if you can push the mechanics, you can really kind of, you know, excel at what's going on. <clears throat> I think in this particular one, again, you know, you can see they're starting to make a bit of a pushback as well. I mean, B and C are now being taken, so that's obviously pretty cool. A bit of a fight. That guy got run down. He's roadkill. <laughs> and I think, again, you know, some of the footage you get from just running people over is pretty funny. I mean, I shouldn't be laughing at that. It's pretty disgusting, really, but... I don't know, there's something quite amusing about it. Um, <laughs> and I think particularly when you look at like the way the, uh, the the ragdoll mechanics work in this, they're pretty good, actually. You know, when you really hit someone hard, they go flying. <laughs> uh, as you can see, you're going to hit this guy again. And yeah, and look how many kills I'm getting just driving around, you know what I mean? Didn't, uh, you don't have to be the proist, but it's just uh, a great thing to have. As you can see, I'm pretty rubbish at shooting. That guy just completely survived me, but... Uh, and they're, that's, they're obviously cloning from that C uh, OCU as well. I think it's called an ACU with all the like cloning. Um, and that's it there, basically. So I should actually go and take that, but I think I'm actually more interested in them spawning here and getting killed, so I think I'd rather leave it. But then I think one of the do-gooders on our team tries to hack it. Um, but that's part of the way. Boosh, another kill, another rundown. <laughs> oh, man, this is terrible. <laughs> And, and you can see the, the truck's almost dead. I think something really hit me then. I don't know what it was, but... Oh, man. Not good. Not good. Run away, run away. So, and a lot of the game is about evasion. So that guy's trying to stab me with a Nova knife, I think. Wow, he moves pretty crazy, doesn't he? Um, I think you know, a lot of the game is just about being able to evade. So you see there, I didn't do it, but I was able to evade for a while. Um, <clears throat> and again, if you're on your own and you're against, like, three or, three or four people, then, you know, you need to be able to get the hell out quickly as well. So... Have a play with that, have an experiment, because if you can get out quickly from any particular uh, situation, run around corners and, and so on, you'd be amazed the amount of people who actually run after you into your trap that you lay for them. And I think I showed that in a previous video in the assault rifle video. Just running around a corner, somebody would follow after you and you just muller into them. You know, they think you're running away, you're not. You're actually kind of you know, getting a better bead on them, if that makes sense. Um, again, once again, calling in our vehicle, trusty vehicle. Um, I think, you know, play, if you do play it, use the vehicles more because <clears throat> if everybody spawns a vehicle in, it means you've got vehicles all over the map as well. So, you know, I can use other vehicles, they can use mine. So, um, you know, it does make for a better experience. Uh, just so you know, that's the missiles from the A, B, C and D points. They kind of go up into the air, then they decide which way to fly. I hope they do something with that. And you can see, in, you know, in lower orbit, you can also see that the two MCCs are actually fighting each other. Um, don't know if I've shown much footage of that, but it's pretty awesome. You know, they, they are actually shooting each other with their turrets and stuff, so it's pretty cool. Um, I hope they do more with it. I mean, it'd be good to be able to look up to see something in orbit, like a you know, destroyer or something, actually, in the uh, space above. Now, that would be brilliant. I hope they do that. You never know. Um, I think we'll look more at bombard mechanics when we sort out our factional warfare thing, because currently we're not really in one. Oh, taking a bit of a beating here. Every uh, vehicle does have a shield, as you can see, it's just the shield that's being reduced at the moment. You can fit modules to these vehicles, as you would in each ship, so you can actually fit shield boosters, shield resistance, shield hardeners, and blah blah blah. So basically, you know, as you would in EVE, you would fit... Oh my god. <coughs> that was pretty bad. 
Oh man. Don't know what hit me there. I think that must have been a missile. Anyway, so there you go. So that's exactly what happens is all of a sudden, um, you know, you need to get the hell out. I'd say evasion is actually probably a key skill, to be honest. There may be, I don't think we've even talked about that, but um, other than just this video, I think, you know, part of the game is actually being able to get the hell out of the firefight. I mean, you think about it, this game is like any other FPS, but generally it's where two people come across each other and they run around and dance left and right and it's whoever's the winner. And to be honest, using mouse and keyboard will make it so that you have a slight advantage. Um, but I think, you know, the reality of it is, is still, you know, it does come down to fitting if you've got a good fitting. That guy just got absolutely owned by an NT5511 sniper rifle. So I have no idea why that guy didn't shoot me, but maybe you couldn't see me. Anyway, so there we go. And I think, you know, the ability to survive the engagement, I mean, it really is simple as that, the ability to actually just survive one person shooting you, blah, blah, blah. Oh, man. <laughs> so you got me with a grenade. But there you go. That That's part of the thing. You know, it's the ability to, you know, duck and dive and survive the 1v1. Um, you do get the odd kind of engagement where, you know, there are, <clears throat> you know, multiple parties versus multiple parties. But I think the game has yet to evolve into that. At the moment, it's still very much a... Um, ah, right. Now, this is interesting. You see we've got tanks there. I don't know if you can see to the left, the right of the 006, 005, 004, there's a moving square. That's a tank. So I've actually just swapped my fit to an anti-tank fit, knowing that this guy's basically spawned in a tank. And there he is. So he's now going to basically get missile launches up to the ass. And these things, swarm launches, they're called. They're, they're actually standard. They're not particularly good, but what they will do... Oh, crikey. <laughs> What they will do, how I survive that, I don't know, is um, they'll lock on and then they'll home into the, the target. So um, it's really just a case of getting as many beads on them as you can. As you can see that I'm trying to lock. I've locked. Fire. Now what you generally want to do with this, boom, down you go. Now look how many people I killed. One, two, three. Three people are in that tank and they're all now dead just because of this wall launcher. And that's pretty cool. So, and again, you know, here you go. So I'm shooting at this thing. Now what I do is I lock on, then I point up as I fire because the swarms will actually launch up. You want to almost treat it like a bit of an Exocet missile. You fire it up and then it, it actually fires down on them. If I just, like these guys are firing directly at them, I think it's hitting a bit of the scenery before. So I just kind of last shot, show you that there. Oh, I'm getting shot, blind. And you can see that, you know, the swarm launchers, you need to kind of, I mean, think of the free, uh, the Half-Life 2 uh, rocket. You know, you'd, you'd kind of get your bead on it, you fire it into the air, then you'd lay, lower your bead onto it. Similar to that, but, you know, you basically do a lock on. Um, and I think that's, um, that's something to bear in mind because you actually do get, um, you know, more kills if you do that because, you know, your, your swarm launchers won't go around the scenery. They'll try to, but generally they won't. So um, they'll actually just make, make a direct line to wherever the target is. And uh, that can cause you problems um, if you're not, you know, if you're not shooting correctly. But uh, there you go. So I've got three kills from that tank. And, and again, calling in a tank is pretty serious business because obviously they cost real isk. You know, well, isk, they cost isk. So um, that guy spawning in his tank is probably a bit fed up that he just paid 200, 300k for basically <laughs> to get owned <laughs> by, by somebody with a militia rocket uh, launcher. So... You know, vehicles are good in this game, but I would stress they're not they're not brilliant. You know, they're, they're not going to save you every time. Oh, man, that's not good. So I always walk into somebody who's got... Um, oh, he's got the same gun as me there, actually. So he shot me with my Thorn uh, SMG. Good, good SMG, actually. Um, but I think, you know, I'll do some shotgun footage later because... Oh, there you go, I got revived, so that's really good. So actually, somebody revived me, so I didn't have to respawn. That's awesome. Um, in fact, is that the guy that killed me? I think it might have been, actually. Oh, well, we'll see. <laughs> I'll have to look at the footage again. But yeah, this is the beauty of it. You know, this, the ability to... Rev oh, man, what is this guy doing? Man, what was that about? That's weird. So, <laughs> basically, there's a lot of that kind of thing going on, you know, and you you just got to you got to kind of check your corner. you got to check all the corners and everything because there's always somebody hiding. Um, and that guy, I think, was trying to <clears throat> going to try and snipe us from afar. So, a bit sneaky, but you know what can you do? Um, and I think that's part of the game is that a lot of people do play very stealthily. They'll run somewhere, they'll hide, and then they'll snipe or they'll shoot and so on. So, you know, you do have to be very cautious when you run around corners. <clears throat> what I would probably say is a good tip is the map on the top left. I know it's um, you know it's obvious. I'm sure you do this, but. 
um, just make sure that you're always kind of just glancing at it because as I run up to this point A, for example, if I now see any dots, I can then, you know, my scanner will detect, oh, there, I've seen somebody there. So I now know there's a sniper up there. So I can just have that in the back of my mind as I walk away here because I'm then knowing that I'm becoming, I'm coming into the open. <clears throat> so this is why I think it's worth, you know, you, that little radar thing. So there, it just flashed someone up there. So I could turn around quickly and then start to fire on them. So I avoided being ambushed. So I would say that, you know, if you can, always just try and keep an eye on that little map. I know it's an, I know I'm sure you all do that, but it's an obvious one, but I just think it's a great way to, uh, to, to kind of see people coming. And that's where you can actually damp yourself. So you can, <laughs> it sounds rude, but you can damp your signal. So basically people can't see you in that map. And that's what it means. So there we go. That was a good fight. Got 10K skill points from it. So that's pretty decent. <clears throat> Look how much Esk I got. That's a dropship right there in Isk that I just got. So that, that owns. And I got, what, 16 kills and 6 deaths. Well, you know, the, key, the KD ratio really doesn't matter because I think it's more about the war points and I think it's more about how much fun did you have. And I think this is an amazingly fun game and I hope you enjoyed that. See you next time.